Okay, well welcome to the tutorial to the synchronized uh, prediction effect. Now this, like I say, I think you'll agree with me, this is quite powerful in that um, the trick is pretty much done in the spectator's hands and as you've seen from the performance how impossible seeming this could, this could really be. Now, um, what you're going to do first off is you're going to start out with one deck of cards to present to spectator one and you're going to just, uh, it's important that you just casually show the mix of cards and then do one riffle shuffle yourself because the reasoning behind that, it doesn't matter about the order of these cards, this first deck in particular, it's just by presenting it, by casually showing the cards and doing one riffle shuffle yourself, it just makes the next time you present the second deck to the second spectator because you're going to do the exact same thing with the second deck and it's important that you do these, the same thing, just to show, just psychologically, it just sh shows some natural consistency with, with how you're presenting this effect, okay? Because the second deck is actually going to be a set-up deck, but you want it to come across as a mixed-up deck with your, with your own riffle shuffle, which I'll get into in a moment. So for the first deck, it doesn't matter about the order of this one, but what does matter is that you must have both jokers in this deck of cards, okay? So you need 54 cards in the deck. To make it work so have to you have to have two jokers in there and that goes for the second deck which we'll get into the setup with this later anyways so first off you present the first deck again just don't make a big deal of it just casually show the cards as they're mixed do one riffle shuffle yourself hand the deck to the spectator and have them you could suggest to them if they want to continue shuffling the deck they can and or they can do repeated cuts or whatever and then have them deal two even piles on the table. It's important that they're two even piles, so they must complete the dealings of the two piles, but they can stop wherever they want. They, they can be really small packets, they can be almost dealt through the entire deck, it doesn't matter. They can stop anywhere they wish, so let's say they stop there. The remaining of the deck, just leave that somewhere in view. Now they can choose whatever two piles that they've just dealt, and they can discard that pile or keep it, it doesn't matter. The other pile that they choose, they can further mix them if they want, and they are then asked to secretly think of any single digit number, ace through ten, or, sorry, not single digit, because they could think of ten, but any number one through ten. They could think of ten, they could think of one, any number in between. Whatever number they think of, they can count that many cards from the bottom card of the packet, starting with the rightmost card. So one, two, three, four, Five, let's say they thought of six and they stop here. So then they're remembering six and their selected card, the six of hearts in this case. You could even have them write this down, their number and their card, just for added, you know, security there. So um, they're thinking of uh, six and the six of hearts, okay? Now, they are then to just take their packet, square it up as soon as they've had their card and number, and they are to just drop it on the remainder of the deck on the table okay now once that's done we can set those aside we go to our second packet of cards now with this packet even though this is a set up deck of cards it won't come across as set up because you're going to show a casual mix of cards you're not going to make a big deal of it you're just going to casually show the cards and then you're going to come to the either a joker or a court card and what is what the setup is is the top upper portion of the deck they're all just court cards and jokers, okay? You have to have both jokers in this deck also, like I said earlier. And you have to have all the court cards all on top. It doesn't matter the order. And what you're going to do is you're going to just casually separate the cards at that point, at the first court card or joker or whatever it happens to be. And you're just going to casually separate them and then quickly just turn the packets over because you don't really want to reveal that you have a, too much of a smaller packet than the rest of the deck. You want to kind of just keep that sort of hidden. But... What you want to do is give the effect that you're shuffling, you're riffle shuffling two packets of cards together. That's the main thing. And you can even, you know, kind of casually show that you've, you know, genuinely riffle shuffle them together. Because it doesn't matter where the court cards go in this deck. But what does matter is the rest of the cards, how they're set up. And I'll get into that right now. All it is, it's a very easy setup. You're setting up 10 cards at a time, ace through 10. Whoops ace through ten in any order it doesn't matter about the order of the ace through tens 
but set them up so that the next ace through ten portion of cards is the exact same setup as the previous one okay so it doesn't matter like I say about the order of the values just as long as they repeat in the same order for the next portion of ten cards okay so you're just doing that just repeating all of the cards in a random looking order the ace through tens in a random looking order repeating in the exact same pattern just like so as you can see how I have here and it's just repeated all through the deck okay now once you have that all set up and all your court cards on top you're ready to present this deck and again that's why you want to kind of show the consistency with from the first deck when you brought it out you just casually show the mix of cards kind of quickly go through just so they can see all the different reds and blacks and so they don't really notice that there's no court cards in there but you just kind of briefly go through till you come to the first joker or court card at the top portion quickly turn the two packets together give them a nice riffle shuffle show them that they're mixed if you want or riffled together fairly enough and then you can just close it all up and it just seems like you've done a nice fair riffle shuffle which you have they just don't know that you just use court cards on one one side of the shuffle now what you can do next is you can have the spectator now freely cut the cards as many times as they like it doesn't matter where they end up you're going to get them to come up with 10 random cards or supposedly supposedly random cards but first, after they've cut and where they're, wherever they've stopped, you have them deal, or you can yourself do this, you're going to deal half the packet, or half the deck. So you're going to need, because there's two jokers in there, being 54 cards in the deck, you of course are going to have to deal 27 cards. So count to yourself, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. So now you have two... Now it's important that you deal the cards, deal 27 cards, don't poker deal the cards because it won't work. This way by dealing half the deck, one half the deck on the table, what you've done is you've actually have a mirror of the setup of the cards, except the court cards of course, but you actually have a mirror of all the um, number valued cards, one going one direction, one going the opposite direction. And this is a setup for, I'm sure, some of you out there, or a lot of you out there who are familiar with card tricks are aware of the Gilbreth principle, which is what this is set up for. So once that happens, um, they can uh, deal however they want, 10 cards. So you get them to deal 10 cards however they wish from each packet. You know, however many cards they want, it doesn't matter. They don't have to necessarily even deal 10 cards right away. You can just have them deal just a little over 10 cards because you're going to run into some court cards and you've got to get rid of those because you're mentioned that we're not going to use court cards so we pull out the court cards and we just make sure we have 10 left one two three four five whoops get rid of that court card five six seven eight nine ten so we have all 10 cards we need so that's perfect now again we just keep pulling out court cards if, if we need more cards then just set the cards face down again or face up it doesn't matter they can deal however many more cards they need until they have 10 cards ace or number cards, 10 number cards, no court cards, okay? Now, by doing this and how the Gilbert principle works, which is another video to explain, which I won't get into that, of course, but no matter what they choose, amazingly enough, they will always come up with values ace through 10 in a mixed order, but they're not gonna realize that because you don't wanna display the cards too much. You wanna just kinda casually show the mix of cards, but keep the cards squared up as, many as much as possible so that they don't notice that they actually have all ace through ten cards individually that there's no repeats okay so it it's just a minor thing they're not really likely going to notice that anyways but um, I think it's just better to be safe but uh, really not that it really matters you know they could have just by fluke had all one of each card ace through ten anyways but it might add some suspicion but anyways that's what happens you're forcing ace through ten because all those cards total together total 55 and that's what happens when we come back to the first deck here it's set up that the selected card is in a position so that when you move one card from the top of the packet to the bottom 55 times the total of these uh, forced values when you move 55 cards 
you will have the selected card in a position that is actually, um, it'll be whatever uh, number that they thought of away from the, um, well, what I'm trying to say is I'm confusing myself here, sorry. Um, what you're going to do next is you're going to have, if you remember in the performance video, you're going to have the spectator reveal for the first time their uh, randomly thought of number. Now, in this case, they were, if we remember correctly, it was the number six. So you'd have them remove the six from the uh, uh, packet of cards. But what you're going to say is you're going to say, let's remove any sixes. It's important that you pluralize that. So, you know, it just adds to the, you know, effect that they could possibly have more than one six in here, okay? So they're going to remove a six. Now, what that does mathematically the total of the remaining values will add up exactly enough so that when you, when you move one card from the top to the bottom of the deck for each value that's left, you will arrive exactly, mathematically, it's just how it works, you will arrive at their selected card. Okay? It's just how it happens, and again, that's another whole video about how this works with this deck, but I can't really get into it. I'll let you play with that, and you can, um, I'm sure, figure it out after some playing around and experimenting. Okay, so that's it. That's how the trick works. It's just completely self-working as you can see. And uh, it's all based on that one setup. And I hope that all made sense. Uh, yeah, so that's the trick and I hope you enjoy it. And please thumb up if you liked it. And thanks for watching.